20th century Eastern Orthodox theology has been dominated by Neo Palamism, the revival of St. Palamas and Hesychasm. John Baer characterizes Orthodox theology as having been reborn in the 20th century. Norman Russell describes Orthodox theology as having been dominated by an arid scholasticism for several centuries after the fall of Constantinople. Russell describes the post-war re-engagement of modern Greek theologians with the Greek fathers with the help of diaspora theologians and Western patristic scholars. A significant component of this re-engagement with the Greek fathers has been a rediscovery of Palamas by Greek theologians who had previously been given less attention than the other fathers, according to Michael Angold, the Rediscovery of Palamas writings by theologians of the last century has played a crucial role in the construction of present-day orthodoxy. Bishop Callistos has predicted that the 20th century will be remembered as the century of Palamas. <laughs> <laughs> Russian émigré theologians After the Russian Revolution, many Orthodox theologians fled Russia and founded centers of Orthodox theology in the West. The most notable of these were the Orthodox Theological Institute of St. Sergius in Paris and Orthodox Seminary of St. Vladimir in New York. Daniel Payne asserts that, in the 1940s, Russian émigré theologians rediscovered the ascetic theology of St. Gregory Palamas. From this rediscovery, according to Payne, Palamas' theology became the basis for an articulation of an orthodox theological identity apart from Roman Catholic and Protestant influences. Florovsky and Lossky opposed the efforts of the Slavophile movement to identify a uniquely Russian approach to orthodox theology. They advocated instead a return to the Greek fathers in what Florovsky called a neo-patristic synthesis. Payne characterizes the work of Georges Florovsky and Vladimir Lossky as having set the course for Orthodox theology in the 20th century. Metropolitan Hilarion Alfayev identifies five main streams within the theology of the Paris School. The first, associated with the names of Archimandrite Cyprian, Kern, Fr. Georges Florovsky, Vladimir Lossky, Archbishop Basil, Krivoshane, and Fr. John Mayendorf, was dedicated to the cause of patristic revival. The second stream, represented in particular by Fr. Sergius Bulgakov, is rooted in the Russian religious renaissance of the late 19th and early 20th century. Here, the influence of Eastern patristics was interwoven with German idealism and the religious views of Vladimir Soloviev stream. The third prepared the ground for the liturgical revival in the Orthodox Church and is related to the names of Fr. Nicholas Afanasyev and Fr. Alexander Schmemann. Characteristic of the fourth stream was an interest in Russian history, literature, culture and spirituality. To this stream belonged G. Fedotov, K. Mochulsky, I. Konzevich, Fr. Sergius Chetverikov, A. Kartashev and N. Zernov, to name but a few. The fifth stream developed the traditions of Russian religious philosophical thought and was represented by N. Lossky, S. Frank, L. Shestov and Fr. Basil Zenkovsky. One of the central figures of Russian Paris was Nicholas Berdave, who belonged to none of these. According to Michael Gibson, Lossky's paradigm pivots on a double-sided narrative that posits a theological failure of the West characterized as rationalist and philosophical, the antithesis of which is the unbroken Eastern theological tradition of pure apophaticism and mystico-ecclesial experience. Topic. Vladimir Lossky Vladimir Lossky's main theological concern was exegesis on mysticism in the Orthodox tradition. He stated in the mystical theology of the Eastern Church that the Orthodox maintained their mystical tenets while the West lost them after the East-West Schism. A loss of these tenets by the West was due to a misunderstanding of Greek terms such as usha, hypostasis, theosis, and theoria. He cites much of the mysticism of the Eastern Orthodox Church as expressed in such works as the Philokalia, St. John Climacus's Ladder of Divine Ascent, and various others by Pseudo-Dionysus the Areopagite, St. Gregory of Nyssa, St. Basil the Great, St. Gregory Nazianus, and St. Gregory Palamas. Father Georges Florovsky termed V. Lossky's mystical theology of the Eastern Church as a neopatristic synthesis. 
Lasky's main tenet of the mystical theology was to show through reference to the Greek fathers' works of the ancient church that their theosis was above knowledge gnosis. This was further clarified in his work Vision of God or Theoria. In both works Lasky shows some of the differences between Eastern Orthodoxy i.e. St. Dionysus the Areopagite's work and Plotinus and the tenets of Neoplatonism. Asserting that Eastern Orthodoxy and Neoplatonism, though they share common culture and concepts, are not the same thing and have very different understandings of God and ontology. Lasky, like his close friend Father Georges Florovsky, was opposed to the sophiological theories of Father Sergei Bulgakov and Vladimir Soloviev. In the words of Lasky's own father N. O. Lasky, one characteristic of his theology that should be underscored, is that he was not, and always refused to be, a direct descendant of the famous Russian religious philosophy 1. The term Russian religious philosophy being Neoplatonic as such, having its origin in the works of the Slavophile movement and its core concept of Sobornost, which was later used and developed by Vladimir Soloviev. Topic. Post-war Greek theologians As the first generation of Russian émigré theologians died out, the torch was taken up by Greek theologians in the post-war period. Until the 1950s, Greek theology had tended towards a scholastic approach. David Ford characterizes it as doctrinal capita with patristic catenae added. The impact of Florovsky and Lasky began to spread beyond the Slavic Orthodoxy. According to Daniel Payne, Romanides and Yanaras want ed to remove the Western and pagan elements from the Hellenic identity and replace it with the Orthodox identity rooted in Hesychast spirituality based on the teachings of Gregory Palamas. John Romanides developed a theology which was vehemently anti Augustinian. His work had a significant influence on theological dialogue between the Eastern Orthodox Church and the Oriental Orthodox Churches. Christos Yanaras argues that the introduction of Western scholasticism into Orthodox theology inevitably led to the confusion present in the modern Hellenic identity. The adverse effects of this corruption of Greek Orthodox thought for the rise of Greek nationalism, the acceptance and formation of the modern Hellenic nation-state, and the establishment of the Church of Greece as an autocephalous national church separate from the Patriarchate of Constantinople, John Zeziolas is arguably the most widely read Orthodox theologian in the West. Georges <laughs> Florovsky <laughs> During the 1930s, Georges Florovsky undertook extensive researches in European libraries and wrote his most important works in the area of patristics as well as his magnum opus, Ways of Russian Theology. In this massive work, he questioned the Western influences of scholasticism, pietism, and idealism on Russian theology and called for a re-evaluation of Russian theology in the light of patristic writings. One of his most prominent critics was Nikolai Berdave, the religious philosopher and social critic. John Mayendorf John Mayendorf's doctoral dissertation on Palamas is considered to have transformed the opinion of the Western Church regarding Palamism. Before his study of Palamas, Palamism was considered to be a «curious and sui generis example of medieval Byzantium's intellectual decline». Mayendorf's landmark study of Palamas however set Palamas firmly within the context of Greek patristic thought and spirituality", with the result that Palamism is now generally understood to be a faithful witness to the long-standing Eastern Christian emphasis on deification theosis as the purpose of the divine economy in Christ. Roman Catholic Jean-Yves Lacoste describes Mayendorf's characterization of Palamas' theology and the reception of Mayendorf's thesis by the Orthodox world of the latter half of the 20th century. For J. Mayendorf, Gregory Palamas has perfected the patristic and consular heritage, against the secularizing tide that heralds the Renaissance and the Reformation, by correcting its platonizing excesses along biblical and personalist lines. Palamidism, which is impossible to compress into a system, is then viewed as the apophatic expression of a mystical existentialism. Accepted by the Orthodox world with the exception of Romanides, this thesis justifies the Palamite character of contemporary research devoted to ontotheological criticism Yanaris, to the metaphysics of the person Clement, and to phenomenology of ecclesiality or of the Holy Spirit Babrinskoy. 
A number of notable Orthodox theologians such as John Romanides have criticized Mayendorf's understanding of Palamas as flawed. Romanides argued that Mayendorf's entire characterization of Palamas' teachings was erroneous, criticizing what he called Mayendorf's imaginative theories concerning Palamite monistic prayer and anthropology, and incarnational and sacramental heart mysticism. According to Duncan Reed, the theme of the debate between Mayendorf and Romanides centered on the relationship between nominalism and Palamite theology. Romanides characterized Mayendorf as engaged in an "...obsessed struggle to depict Palamas as an heroic biblical theologian putting to the sword of Christological correctives the last remnants of Greek patristic Platonic Aphophaticism and its supposed linear descendants, the Byzantine Platonic nominalistic humanists." Orthodox theologians such as John Romanides, Alexander Golitsyn, and Andrew Louth have argued against Mayendorf's interpretation of the works of Pseudo-Dionysius the Areopagite and have strenuously asserted the orthodoxy of the Dionysian corpus. <laughs> John Romanides John Romanides contributed many speculations, some controversial, about the cultural and religious differences between Eastern and Western Christianity, and how these divergences have impacted the Church's development and influenced the Christian cultures of East and West. He was especially concerned about ways in which Western intellectual culture had, in his view, compromised Greek national identity. His theological works emphasize the empirical basis of theology called theoria, or vision of God, as the essence of orthodox theology. He identified hesychasm as the core of Christian practice and studied extensively the works of 14th-century hesychast and theologian St. Gregory Palamas. His research on dogmatic theology led him to examine the close links between doctrinal differences and historical developments. Thus, in his later years, he concentrated on historical research, mostly of the Middle Ages but also of the 18th and 19th centuries. Romanides criticized Mayendorf's understanding of Palamas as flawed. Romanides described Mayendorf as engaged in an obsessed struggle to depict Palamas as an heroic biblical theologian putting to the sword of Christological correctives the last remnants of Greek patristic Platonic Aphophaticism and its supposed linear descendants, the Byzantine Platonic nominalistic humanists. Topic Christos Yanaras The main volume of Yanaras' work represents a long course on study and research of the differences between the Greek and Western European philosophy and tradition. Differences that are not limited at the level of theory only, but also define a mode praxis of life. Topic references Topic Sources The Orthodox Church. Ware, Timothy. Penguin Books, 1997. ISBN 0-14-014656-3 The Orthodox Church, 455 Questions and Answers. Haracas, Stanley H. Light and Life Publishing Company, 1988. ISBN 0-937032-56-5 The Spirituality of the Christian East, a Systematic Handbook by Tomas Spidelik, Cistercian Publications Inc. Kalamazoo, Michigan 1986 ISBN 0-87907-879-0 Orthodox Dogmatic Theology, a Concise Exposition Protopresbyter Michael Pomazansky St. Herman of Alaska Brotherhood Press 1994 ISBN 0-938635-69-7 the Mystical Theology of the Eastern Church, Vladimir Lasky SVS Press, 1997, ISBN 0-913836-31-1 James Clark and Co. Ltd., 1991, ISBN 0-227-67919-9 Orthodox Theology, An Introduction, Vladimir Lasky SVS Press, 2001 ISBN 0-913836-43-5 In the Image and Likeness of God, Vladimir Lasky SVS Press, 1997. ISBN 0-913836-13-3 The Vision of God, Vladimir Lasky SVS Press, 1997, ISBN 0-913836-19-2 The Orthodox Way St. Vladimir's Seminary Press, 1995, ISBN 0-913836-58-3 The Inner Kingdom, Collected Works, Volume 1 St. Vladimir's Seminary Press, 2000, ISBN 0-88141 
1-2-0-9-0 in the Image of the Trinity, Collected Works, Vol. 2 St. Vladimir's Seminary Press, 2006, ISBN 0-88141-225-2 Communion and Intercommunion Light and Life, 1980, ISBN 0-937032-20-4 How Are We Saved? The Understanding of Salvation in the Orthodox Tradition Light and Life, 1996, ISBN 1-880971-22-4 Orthodox Dogmatic Theology, a concise exposition Protopresbyter Michael Pomazansky St. Herman of Alaska Brotherhood Press 1994 ISBN 0-938635-69-7 online version 1 Let There Be Light, an Orthodox Christian Theory of Human Evolution for the 21st Century Theandros, Summer 2008, ISSN 1555-936-X 2 Topic External links History Jeffrey D. Finch, Neo Palamism, Divinite Grace, and the Breach Between East and West PowerPoint Paul L. Gavrilic, The Orthodox Renaissance Noble, Ivana, Noble, Tim, Orthodox Theology in Western Europe in the 20th Century, European History Online, Mainz, Institute of European History, 2013, Retrieved, September 2, 2013. Various Directory of Orthodox Internet Resources.